What everyone, the chosen individual here with another video. I know my voice is obnoxious. I know I I I, I should have known. I'm sorry. I'm gonna start using text to speech soon. Anyways, so recently our intelligence and information department has been hard at work deciphering the new technology that has just been introduced. And my brain has been working even harder. Kind of. <laughs> And the new features that have been added to HBM are plenty, yes, I'll accept it. But there's one main takeaway. The pressurized water reactor slash molten salt reactor. You remember that video that I posted like, oof, way too long ago that is now horribly irrelevant, where I said that likely a uh, uh, pressurized water reactor will never be added to HBM. Oh boy. It's also funny because I, w uh, I was um, proposing HBM to make a molten salt reactor. And he said uh, an MSR was planned but was then cancelled. The idea was scrapped. Uh, an MSR will never be coming to a uh, nuclear tech mod. Well, against who came out on top, buddy. Or maybe I just, I don't know, maybe I just figured out his his plan way too early. In any case, pressurized water reactors are here, and in this showcase, I'm going to show you the very basics of them. So, this is a pressurized water reactor core. A multi-block structure. Like the RBMK, somewhat. Now, uh, what a pressurized water reactor does is that it uh, uses a uh, fission reaction to heat up coolant. Uh, somewhere, somewhat similar to the RBMK fluid heater, which is what I used on my other um, uh, per, uh, RBMK pressurized water reactor. Which I guess is kind of a new type of RBMK. <laughs> um, but yeah, then it passes it on to a heat exchanger, which... Um, then we can um, switch the um, which we can then use the hot coolant to heat up and boil steam and then pass it through the turbines to get power. Now, with this current very inefficient setup, I have 21.21 million HEs per second, but before it was producing 27.69 uh, million HEs per second. The reason for that is that as fuel uh, runs out, you will need to one, restock it, and two, um, deal with it. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. This is a showcase, not a tutorial. I won't be going very in depth. In any case, um, yeah, it's very simple. Heat exchanger, steam, turbines, um, energy, low pressure steam, you know the deal. So let me just show you how to operate the pressurized water reactor. And this is the reactor's GUI. Or, I don't know. HUD. Heads up display, there we go. So, to the left, we have the thermal uh, monitoring controls. To the center, we have the fuel reactivity and general controls. And to the right, we have the um, reactor thermal monitoring controls. They're not really controls. They're more panels. In any case, um, for example, this gauge um, monitors the reactor's core, the reactor's whole heat. The higher the hole heats, the more uh, coolant will be uh, transformed to hot coolant and then sent on to the heat exchanger. And what you need to make sure is that you have to uh, a bunch of component uh, coolant channels and a bunch of heat exchangers in your reactor. There we go. I'll be showing you uh, this core, uh, which is what I used for this one in a second, just in case you want to uh, copy the setup or do anything with it. Uh, I'll be showing you that in a minute. So yeah, um, uh, this gauge just measures the reactor core heat, uh, core heat, yeah. Basically the heat of the core and the actual fuel. If this gets too hot, it'll explode. This light will turn on if the reactor is too hot, or is in a runaway reaction. So if you see it, you either need to run for the hills, or be a hero and shut down the reactor. I'm not a hero. And any case, um, to the left, we have the fuel, um, 
the fuel conversion gauge. Basically, when this gauge reaches 100, a de hot depleted rod will be, um, be outputted by the reactor, and you can then use item dots to take it and put it inside um, spent fuel pool drums. If you don't have access to item dots or don't want to um, make the system, you can also just um, take them manually because they appear right here in the reactor's heads up display. I have no idea what this means. This is the control rod controls. Redundance. Basically, whatever number you input here is what the reactor's uh, current control rod um, setup will be. Put this. For example, if I lower it to 35, um, the control rods will only be lifted out of the reactor by 35%. And you see the core heat actually went down. And I think our power production also went down. The steam inside the boilers also went down. Yes, 13.66 million HEs. So you want to use your control rods to uh, regulate the amount of power you're producing. Also keep in mind that uh, lower control rod percentages will decrease um, fuel expense, but it'll also generate less power. So you would kind of have to balance that. Let me just return it to 55 so we can get, um, here we go, the core heat back to um, greenish yellow. Um, with this slot, you can input fuel into the reactor if you just grab, um, there are special fuel rods, uh, for example, um, of many different types. For example, let me just use highly enriched uranium 235, and as you can see, as I uh, input them, the, um, the reactor will accept them. And well, of course, as the more fuel there is, the higher the heat percentage will be. So make sure that when you, the reactor is full, it isn't too hot. See, for example, there, I'm kind of entering into the danger zone, so I should lower my control rod percentage back to 45% uh, to keep the core heat in check. And to the left, we have the um, hot coolant and coolant buffers. Basically, uh, the tanks that um, show how much uh, fluid is inside the reactor right now. By putting a fluid identifier here, you can change the amount of, uh, well, the um, type of coolant that you're going to use. Uh, there are many types of coolants, but um, all the all the um, all the fluids that have the uh, uh, pressurized water reactor coolant uh, heat exchangeable tag. Well, I'll just highlight it on screen for you. There we go. Um, all the ones that have that tag are the ones that uh, can be put inside the reactor core to actually be heated up. So yeah. If you're asking me if pressurized water can actually be used inside this reactor, I have no idea. I haven't tested it yet because I haven't been able to do many things. But yeah, that's all for the core uh, GUI. So now let's go on to the core design itself. Let me just... Let me just uh, separate this reactor, this core into... into Technical difficulties over. All right, okay, let's continue. Uh, so that, yeah, let me just divide uh, this uh, reactor core into into um, into layers so that it's easier to visualize um, what I made here. Gonna separate them all. There's no uh, convenient command, but world that it just does does make it significantly faster. There we go. So now we have split the uh, pressurized water reactor's uh, core into um, five uh, layers. There's two actual reactivity fuel layers, and there's three cooling layers, I'm going to call them, because they're solely comprised of the component known as pressurized water reactor coolant channels. Saying PWR is really, really strange, so that's why I'm not saying the acronym. In any case, um, yeah, this is, design, this is the design that I made. As you can see, uh, reactor fuel rods must be in a kind of sort of grid formation, similar to that of the RBMK. Um, 
and you must have control rods between them so you can actually, you know, control the flux uh, in the core. You're also going to need some... Oh, Jesus, I made a mistake here. Oh, uh, whoops. Whoopsies. You're going to need, um... Yeah, um, you're gonna need, um, you're gonna need some neutron sources, which I'm gonna highlight right now on the screen, and you're also going to need some heat exchangers. Oh, well, let me just highlight the components now. I'm gonna highlight the fuel rods. There we go, now the control rods. There we go, now the heat exchangers. Okay, and finally, the neutron sources. If you don't have neutron sources, the reactor won't work at all. So make sure you have them. And I just have these uh, two layers sandwiched in between um, these cooling channels to make sure appropriate cooling. Uh, the RBMK, I mean, um, the uh, pressurized water reactor doesn't actually have thermodynamics like the RBMK does. But it still needs appropriate cooling because otherwise it's going to explode. So let's just uh, put this core back together. Oops. Oh. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We have reformed the reactor core sandwich. And now, well, you might be asking, how do I uh, form my very own pressurized water reactor? I've built the core. Yes, I've built it uh, according to instructions. It's chosen an individual. But how do I actually uh, form the multi-block? That's where, that's where the magic comes into play, my friend. Quite literally. Hold on. I made a mistake there. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to, um, basically what you need is a bunch of these, uh, pressurized water reactor pressure vessels. And they just need to cover the entirety of the, um, of the reactor superstructure. Keep in mind that corners are not needed, and those are just blocks of steel. They aren't some sort of special block. Uh, these are the multi-block, um, blocks, and you'll know when the multi-block has been successfully formed. So I'm just gonna... Magic. Go. Magic is beautiful, isn't it? Anyways, uh, so once you have your reactor superstructure completely, and I mean completely encased in pressure vessels, don't leave a single block behind, you're gonna need a reactor controller. Now at this point you could just right click it and the reactor would form, sure. But you don't have any ways to input or output coolant. That's where the access ports come in. You're gonna need several access ports, depending on how much uh, stuff you want to move. So for example, here I have two, um, both for hot coolant, and on this side I also have two, both for um, normal coolant. And once you have your um, uh, hot coolant and coolant input and out output and input valves, oh well, um, but uh, I mean access ports, I'd say. You can also add um, additional ports. For example, oh, uh, there we go. For example, you can make days. Here will be the um, depleted hot, uh, out, hot depleted uh, f spent fuel, and you will introduce a buffer of fresh fuel here. Right click and magic occurs. You now have a pressurized water reactor to your disposal. Fill it up with fuel. Make sure to keep the coolant in check. And make sure not to make a nuclear disaster like I did for this video. <laughs> Anyways, guys, so that's all for today. Um, well, you can also just fill in. Well, you, you're better off filling these since it kind of does look ugly. I recommend making with a block that kind of blends with the actual uh, pressurized water reactor blocks um but yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching uh i hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful uh make sure to use the core design which i uh, showcased i'm sorry for the small technical difficulties i have no idea what happened in any case thank you so much for watching this has been the chosen individual
and I'll see you next time. Peace out, gamers. Also, wait, 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 no, blah, 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 blah. there we go, rewind. Remember to join my Discord and subscribe and like to the channel so you, and subscribe to the channel and like this video so you can make sure it's not dead. Yay. Anyways, aside from that, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. It's been Chosen Individual, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, gamers.